Welcome to Module 2 of the TaxLayer Pro Basic Income Tax Preparation course for filing 2018 tax returns. In this module, we'll cover dependents. And right now, we're here on the 1040 for 2018 in the dependents section. Despite attempts by the IRS to clarify whether or not someone qualifies as a dependent, today's complex living arrangements often raise questions as to just whom can be claimed on your tax return. There are now two classes of people who can qualify as dependents, qualifying children and qualifying relatives. Now let's go through some of the situations for dependent taxpayer test. If the taxpayer can be claimed as a dependent by another person, then he or she cannot claim anyone else as a dependent. Even if the taxpayer, from the statement above, has a qualifying child or qualifying relative, he or she cannot claim that person as a dependent. If the taxpayer is filing a joint return, and his or her spouse could be claimed as a dependent by someone else, the taxpayer and his or her spouse cannot claim any dependents on their joint return. In other words, what the IRS is saying here, if you are a dependent of someone else, how can you be eligible yourself to claim a dependent? There's four tests to be a qualifying child. The relationship test, the age test, the residency test, and the support test. First the relationship test for a qualifying child. The child must be your son, daughter, stepchild, eligible foster child, adopted child, or a descendant of any of them. For instance, a grandchild. Or your brother, sister, half-brother, half-sister, stepbrother, stepsister or a descendant, in other words a niece or a nephew. Next, the age test for qualifying child. The child must be under age 19 at the end of the year and younger than you, or a full-time student under age 24 at the end of the year, or permanently and totally disabled at any time during the year regardless of age. The residency test for a qualifying child. The child must have lived with you for more than half of the year with exceptions for temporary absences. If the child would be a qualifying child except for not meeting the residency test, the child may be your qualifying relative. If the child does not live with you but lives in Canada or Mexico and meets the gross income test and the support test, the child can be your qualifying relative. And this is the residency test for a qualifying child. Next, the support test. The child cannot have provided more than half of his or her own support for the year. Support expenses include food, lodging, clothing, education, medical and dental care, recreation, transportation, ordinary and necessary expenses to live, support expenses that are excluded, scholarships received by a dependent, taxes, and life insurance premiums. There's also a special test for a qualifying child of more than one person. Sometimes a child meets the relationship, the residency, and support tests to be a qualifying child of more than one person. Only one person can actually claim the child as a qualifying child and receive all of the tax benefits. Does your qualifying child qualify you for the child tax credit or the credit for other dependents? Now the credit for other dependents is new for 2018 and also for 2018. Does the child have a social security number, an ITIN, an individual taxpayer identification number, or an ATIN? 
issued on or before the due date of your tax return? If yes, was the child a U.S. citizen, national, or resident alien? If yes, was the child under age 17 at the end of 2018? If the answer is yes, did this child have a social security number valid for employment issued before the due date of your 2018 tax return? If all these questions are answered yes, then the taxpayer can claim the child tax credit for 2018. Now we'll talk about this in more detail in a tax module to follow, but for 2018, the child tax credit has doubled from 1000 which it was in 2017, to $2,000 per child for 2018. The tax credit, the child tax credit for 2018, is also refundable up to an amount of $1,400. But again, we'll go over this in more detail in a later tax module. Next, let's talk about qualifying relatives. There's, of course, some tests. The IRS loves their tests but tests to be a qualifying relative. Number one, you're not a qualifying child. That makes sense. Number two, relationship or member of household test. Number three, the gross income test and the support test. First, you're not a qualifying child. A child is not your qualifying relative if the child is your qualifying child or the qualifying child of another taxpayer. The relationship or member of household test to meet this test, the person, the qualifying relative, must either live with you all year or be related to you, such as a child, grandchild, brother, sister, father, mother, grandparent, niece, nephew, uncle, or aunt. And take note, a cousin can only be claimed as a dependent if he or she lived with the taxpayer all year. Next, the gross income test for a qualifying relative. To meet this test, a person's gross income must be less than forty-one fifty for the tax year, 2018. Gross income for the gross income dependency test is all income that is received but not necessarily exempt from tax. This includes all unemployment compensation. Social Security is generally excluded from gross income unless additional income is earned or received. The support test for a qualifying relative. You or the taxpayer must provide more than half of the person's total support for the calendar year. You calculate this by comparing the amount that you or the taxpayer contributed for that person's support to the entire amount of support that that person received from all sources, including the support that the person provided from his or her own funds. Does your qualifying relative qualify you for the credit for other dependents. Now again keep in mind this is a new credit for 2018. Did your qualifying relative have a social security number, an ITIN or ATIN issued on or before the due date of your 2018 tax return? If yes, was your qualifying relative a US citizen, a US national or US resident alien? If yes, you can claim the credit for other dependents for this dependent. Now this credit is $500 per qualifying dependent as long as the adjusted gross income on the tax return doesn't exceed $200,000 or $400,000 if filing jointly. So what are the basic differences between a qualifying child and a qualifying relative on the tax return? The IRS created these distinctions around 15 years ago. So let's take a look at this chart, qualifying child versus qualifying relative, and see the differences. With a qualifying child, you can use the head of household filing status. Same if you have a qualifying relative. Qualifying child will enable the taxpayer to get the education credit. Same for a qualifying relative. Qualifying child will enable the taxpayer 
to get the child care credit, the same with a qualifying relative. However, qualifying child will get the taxpayer the earned income credit if he or she qualifies, but a qualifying relative will not enable the taxpayer to get earned income credit. A qualifying child will enable the taxpayer to get the child tax credit, but a qualifying relative will not allow a taxpayer to get the child tax credit. But keep in mind though that the qualifying relative will enable the taxpayers to get the credit for other dependents if they qualify. The rules say a qualifying child must live with you for more than half the year. My daughter was born in October. Does that mean I have to wait until next year to claim her? Well, no. Even a child born on December the 31st qualifies as a dependent. The same rule applies if a child dies during the year. A child who is born or dies during the year is treated as having lived with you, the taxpayer, all year long. In summary, you cannot claim any dependents if you or your spouse, if filing jointly, could be claimed as a dependent by another taxpayer. You can't claim a married person who files a joint return as a dependent unless that joint return is filed only to claim a refund. You can't claim a person as a dependent unless that person is a U.S. citizen, U.S. resident alien, U.S. national, or a resident of Canada or Mexico. You can't claim a person as a dependent unless that person is your qualifying child or qualifying relative. In the test to be a qualifying child, the child must be your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, half-brother, half-sister, stepbrother, stepsister, or a descendant of any of them. Child must be under age 19 at the end of the year and younger than you or your spouse if filing jointly under age 24 at the end of the year, a student and younger than you or your spouse if filing jointly, or any age if permanently and totally disabled. The child must have lived with you for more than half the year. The child must not have provided more than half of his or her own support for the year. The child must not be filing a joint return for the year unless that return is filed only to get a refund of income tax withheld or estimated taxes that were paid. The IRS tests to be a qualifying relative. The person cannot be your qualifying child or the qualifying child of any other taxpayer. The person either A must be related to you, a child, brother, sister, father, mother, grandparent, niece, nephew, uncle, aunt, or B must live with you all year as a member of your household and your relationship must not violate local law. The person's gross income for the year must be less than 4150 and you must provide more than half of the person's total support for the year. And now let's take a look at a few review questions.